Hi all, we're going to look now at the final round of the Tilburg 1989 tournament in which Kasparov dominated it. With this final game and winning it, he scored a record 12 out of 14 in this famous super tournament. So how did he win his final game here? He played d4 against Simon Ajdin, who was about 2600 at the time, 2605 Fide. Ashtine played e6, which invites the French defence by transposition. So Kasparov had the choice to either play c4 and go into a normal Queen's Pawn type opening or an Indian system, say Nimzu Indian, or to play e4 here and transpose back into the French defence. He actually transposed back into the French defence. So d5 was now played, and he chose the Tarash variation with knight d2. And Ashton now played a very novel move. He played b6. Kasparov played just classically now with knight g f3. And after bishop b7, Kasparov now played a disruptive check with bishop b5. So after c6, bishop d3, what has white achieved with this disruptive check? Well, one plan which is highlighted in this game is that later white has a4, a5, and maybe that's made a little more effect effective by black having this pawn structure. Black also might have to waste a move playing c5 later. And also maybe, you know, black didn't want to play c6, so it's quite a commitment. So anyway, play continued with bishop e7, and after castles, Ashton simplifies in the centre with d takes e4, and after knight takes e4, knight f6, Kasparov played knight takes f6 here, and bishop takes f6 was played. Now Kasparov played bishop f4, apparently leaving the d-pawn and pre. Let's have a quick look. Bishop takes d4 here was not played, but let's have a look at it. There might follow knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and now, according to my analytical assistant, queen c1 would seem to be slightly better for white. So let's have a look why. Let's say routine castles. Rook d1, threatening now bishop takes h7 check, winning the black queen. Say the queen goes to f6. And white now plays queen e3. This is assessed as better for white. Is it because of white's pressure on the dark squares and the two bishops? And black being unable to easily develop, say knight d7, then bishop takes h7 check, with rook takes d7. Perhaps, let's, for example, look at c5, bishop d6, rook e8, bishop e5, queen e7. And now here, white would seem to have an attack with queen h3, so it's dangerous for the black king side. So maybe there was adequate comp compensation for, for the pawn sacrifice. It wasn't taken, however. Ashton, after bishop f4, simply played castles. And Kasparov played queen e2 now, offering the pawn again, which was again rejected. Ashton simply played queen d5. And Kasparov now had a nice move here, gaining tempo, bishop e4. So the queen moves to h5. But this bishop is very useful for pressure on black's queen side and to stop the liberating c5. Now Kasparov's first plan was this a4 idea. If the pawn comes to a5, it gets to be quite dangerous, threatening all sorts of things, a, b, and a6. Ashton didn't play a5, maybe he should have done. He instead played knight d7. And after a5, it seems black has some issues now to deal with. a6 is an immediate threat, and if the bishop retreats, bishop takes c6. Black took on a5, but we have here a pawn fracturing. So if Kasparov can regain this a5 pawn, at the moment it's protected by the queen, 
then these other two pawns will be the next victims for attack. So my first plays bishop d6, and after rook fc8, he now targets that a5 pawn with his queen and rook. Black defends it for the moment, but now after knight e5, white has quite a dominating position, and this horrible outpost bishop on d6 must have annoyed black. Black took on e5, and after d takes e, played bishop a6, which actually later becomes a tactical target there. It's another unpre piece. After rook fe1, perhaps black should have tried bishop c4 here. Ribka seems to think that's an interesting move, maybe with the idea later of bishop d5. Instead, the weakening move f5 was played. Maybe at this stage of the tournament, everyone was quite tired. It just seems quite a loosening move and gave Kasparov an easy opportunity to win. Or apparently easy. Everything looks easy if Kasparov's behind the wheel. After bishop takes f6, white picked up the a5 pawn. And it seems to be immediately, materially decisive at least. Because what is black doing about this? The queen and bishop are forked. Now why, why did Ajstein take on f6 with the bishop? Leaving the protection of the a5 pawn. Let's have a quick look. G takes f6 and Ribka thinks rook a3 is a crushing move, coming to the king side with a vicious attack. For example, queen f7, check, and now queen h6 is actually a mate in 7, believe it or not. Let's give an example. Bishop b6, bishop takes h7, and if queen takes h7, queen takes f6. So it's, let's, it's just very desperate, so that's crushing. So that's why Ajstein had been forced to play bishop takes f6, and the dropping of the a5 is decisive. Black desperately played c f bishop b5, but this just allows c4, exploiting that terrible pin on the fifth rank. Now rook d8 was played, which doesn't really help black, especially after Kasparov's next move, queen b4. So he's protecting that bishop, unpinning it as well, leaving this pin against black's queen. Ashtin played rook a c8. Kasparov simply took the bishop now, not minding about black c5, disrupting the protection of white's bishop, because Kasparov now played b6, reigniting this pin, but also after rook takes d6, playing b takes a7, and all of a sudden this pawn is extremely dangerous, supported by this bishop on e4. So black's losing material in a different way now. Rook dd8 was played, and after queen a4, the pawn is being driven through. Black desperately tried to attack white's king with bishop e5. Kasparov simply just queened the pawn here, not minding about this check on h2, because the king's got a safe haven. And after rook takes a8, rook takes a8, black actually didn't bother to try and check Kasparov and just resigned here. Let's have a quick look. Check, king e2, there's nothing here. Check, the checks run out, bishop f3, and white's just a rook up. So let's have a look, quick look in overview and summary of this game. French defence by transposition, a novel third move by black, b6, which didn't work out at all well. Kasparov simply played a disruptive check, and his first plan was simply to play for a4, a5, once this bishop was on e4. And this seemed to be the beginning of the end for black who was overloaded. After this bishop d6, black was under intense pressure already and couldn't keep the bishop protecting the pawn after knight e5. He felt he had to lash out with this f5 here. But maybe he was very worried about this manoeuvre, rook a3 to h3. It's very dangerous, or even to g3. So perhaps that's why. Bishop a6, though, was played first, and, and then the move f5. 
So white just comfortably just took on f6, won the a5 pawn, and with that virtually the game was over. The rest was just accuracy combined with nice tactical skill, just winning the bishop and then using that b pawn decisively to reach final position where white was just winning a rook. So that sealed Kasparov's 12 out of 14 staggering performance in this Tilburg 1989. I hope you enjoyed this coverage of Kasparov in this tournament and I'm intending to look at Linares next so I hope you enjoyed this series and we'll, we'll look forward to Linares selection. Thanks very much and see you on YouTube.